20 grams of NaF sodium fluoride were placed in water. The final volume of the solution was 150 milliliters. Find the final pH. So the first step in a problem like this is to take your compound, NaF in this case, and dissociate it into its ions. So I went ahead and did that. I took sodium fluoride and dissociated it into Na plus and F minus. Next, you have to consider which, if any, of these ions are going to affect the pH of the solution. So in this case, I know Na plus is going to have no effect on the pH of the solution. However, F minus is going to act as a weak base, and it will affect the pH of the solution. So that's why I circled it in red here. So the next step, once you decide which ion is going to affect the pH of the solution, is you allow it to react with the water in that solution and make its products. So we know F minus is a weak base, right? So it's actually going to accept a proton to become HF, while water is going to donate a proton and act as a weak acid in this case to become OH minus. So this OH minus is going to overall drive the pH of this solution. OH minus represents a strong base and it is going to determine what the pH of our overall solution is at the end of the problem. So as you can see, I've drawn out my ice table and I started with the I row, which of course stands for the initial amount of each thing here. You can see I haven't put anything in for H2O, that's because it's a pure liquid and it will not affect our equilibrium. So to get the initial amount of F minus, I actually had to do some calculations up here in these green boxes. So I'd like to make sure you understand that NaF is a soluble salt. What that means is that any amount of NaF we start out with is going to end up as Na plus and F minus. So you see, once I did the calculations, I ended up with this amount of NaF. That means we're going to end up with that same amount of Na plus and F minus because it dissociates completely. So I knew we started out with 20 grams of NaF. So to get that into moles of NaF, I simply divided by the molecular weight of sodium fluoride, 42 grams, and I found that we had 0.48 moles of NaF. Then to get the molarity, because the initial row in an ice table always needs to be in either molarity, some form of concentration, or if you're dealing with KP, it could be atmospheres of pressure, but we can't just put moles onto an ice table, we need molarity. So I divided moles of NaF by the total volume in liters of the solution, which was 150 or 0.15 liters. So 3.17 molar NaF meant that we had 3.17 molar F minus. So that was my initial amount here for the F minus. And of course, I'm gonna assume I started out with no HF or OH minus. My change row always deals in, with X terms. So since this is a reactant, we have minus X here, and these are products, so we have plus X and plus X, and they all have stoichiometric coefficients of one, so it's just minus one X, plus one X, and plus one X. Finally, I obtain my equilibrium row by adding together the I and the C rows. You can see here 3.17 plus negative X is 3.17 minus X, zero plus X is X, and zero plus X is X. So now I was ready to set up my equilibrium expression. So I knew that F minus was a base, so I would need a KB. So I said KB is equal to the concentration of my products, X times X is X squared, over the concentration of my reactant, F minus 3.17 minus X. So I had to find my KB now. So in order to find my KB, you have to think about what you may be given in a problem. So you're most likely gonna have a chart with all of the KAs of your acids, in this case, HF is a weak acid. And we know that the KA of HF is 7.2 times 10 to the negative four. So this is a KA, but we need the KB because F minus is acting as the base. The KA you can sort of think of is HF going to H plus and F minus, but F minus going back to HF is a base, it's KB. So we know the equation relating KA to KB looks like this, KW equals KA times KB. We know KW is always gonna be one times 10 to the negative 14, and we know KA is 7.2 times 10 to the negative four. Divide both sides by 7.2 times 10 to the negative four, and you're able to solve for KB, and you find that it's 1.39 times 10 to the negative 11. So I went ahead and plugged that in for my KB here. And you can see what I've done in red here is actually check the shortcut rule. And the shortcut rule says that if 100 times my KB is less than my initial reactant concentrations, I can forget about 
this minus x here. And 100 times 1.39 times 10 to the negative 11 is certainly less than 3.17, so I can actually forget about this x here. And you can see that's what I've done down here. It used to be x squared over 3.17 minus x, now it's x squared over 3.17. So then what I did is I multiplied both sides by 3.17 and took the square root to isolate x, and I found that x was 6.64 times 10 to the negative 6. So now I'd like to draw your attention up to this bubble here. These are important equations to know when you're solving pH problems. So this x, you can see I've circled this red x here, and that's because this tells us the precise concentration in molarity of the OH minus concentration. And remember, I said that was what is going to determine this solution's final pH. So I've written here the concentration of OH minus or hydroxide is 6.64 times 10 to the negative 6, and I can actually use this to find the pH. I know that pOH is equal to the negative log of the OH minus concentration, and using pH, I can, pOH, I can get to pH. So pOH is equal to negative log times 6.64 times 10 to the negative 6, which was 5.18, and finally I was able to say that pH is equal to 14 minus pOH, rearranging this equation right here, plug in 5.18 for pOH, and you find that the final pH of the solution was 8.82.